Hi, I'm Van King. There are many ways to do macro photography. And one of the ways that has developed recently is to use strange lenses on your camera. Now, what is strange lenses? Ordinarily, you might just have an ordinary digital camera, regular lens. You might put some spacers between the regular lens and the digital camera body, and you can photograph closer to the subject doesn't give you all of the kinds of qualities of images you'd like. One of the things that they do is use enlarger lenses. Enlarger lenses have an interesting property. They were on a, an enlarger bellows which had a mechanism up here and you would project from some position here the image of the film onto an image of photographic paper. Once that image was sharp enough then you would put paper in the field of view, you would turn the enlarger on, the light would go through the negative, through the lens, and down to the paper, and you would make an image. These lenses are designed to focus very close. They're designed to be ultra sharp because they don't care how much depth of field is being used. The thickness of the film is incredibly small. So that's all they had to do is design a lens that would photograph in one place, one focal point, a piece of film, and it had to take that sharp image and to project it so it was a sharp image on the paper. No depth of field, but incredibly high sharpness. Maybe even sharper than almost any lens you can buy for a camera unless you're going to spend a gazillion dollars. So. What I've done is made a selection of lenses that do exactly that. These are all enlarger lenses. They look kind of weird. And I've got an ordinary Canon digital camera. It has the regular kinds of threads for Canon mounts. And all I have to do is find a way to put this lens onto this camera. Most of the lenses you will encounter will be Leica type threads. Leica threads are originally those used on Leica cameras. It was used as a European standard. Eventually the photographic industry adopted this for a very common mount used in darkroom photography. But you have to put it onto that camera and all you need is a little metal flat adapter. It has Leica threads, and I can screw this onto the lens. This side has a bayonet that an ordinary Canon lens would have. And here's the end of some extension tubes. If you want to put it onto the camera, you click it into place. You can now take a close-up picture. I'm going to show you this is 39 millimeters, much the same as the others. This is a all metal one with no coating on it. I've even marked it M39 to EOS because I will use these on other lenses sometimes, but it doesn't matter. I've decided I was just going to get one adapter for each and every lens and that way save time. It just screws on. It's ready to go. I can put it on the equipment, exchange lenses. It's not going to be uh, very difficult at all. Well, what do these lenses do? Why do I have a selection of them? I should tell you I also have a selection of adapters because not all of the diameters of the Leica type thread are the same. This is a 39 millimeter diameter adapter. We'll now look at the 105 millimeter lens. Looks very much like the others, but the size of the thread is different. This is not a common thread, it's a rare thread. This is 32.5 millimeters. And in order to get an adapter that will fit on my camera, I need to go through a series of adapters to make it happen. This is a 32.5 millimeter adapter, costs a fortune. You can get these on eBay, of course. I see there's a cheaper one that's available right now from Portugal. This one came from England. And now I have the common diameter, 39 millimeters. So that it can fit 
onto an ordinary 39 millimeter Leica adapter. This will now fit onto my camera setup. 80 millimeters. You can focus even closer. It has a crazy thread, 25 millimeters. So you need an even more expensive $35 adapter. That thread size, 25, goes to Thirty-nine, and now that can be used. I like to keep an adapter dedicated for each lens so I don't have to fumble finding the lens adapter. Because this particular one is so expensive, I only have one of those and I'll swap it between my other lenses. Fortunately, I only have one of the rare type 325 millimeter diameters, so I only need one of these setups. This is a close-up of one of the enlarger lenses. It'll show you the various features that I've been talking about. This is the 105 millimeter lens, and you can change the f-stop. The f-stop, if you look through the lens, you should be able to see right there a flash. And it's a very small hole. That's the smallest f-stop, and I'm moving the f-stop so that it's wide open. That lets the most light through. When you are using camera lenses, the smallest hole that the image passes through gives you the greatest depth of field. But there's a trade-off. When you increase depth of field, you lose sharpness. If you let in as much light as possible, you're still at a position where you have lost sharpness. Somewhere in between, usually two f-stops from the widest opening, is the sharpest that your lens will record an image. So you look at that number. This is a 5.6 lens. 8 is the next opening. 11 is the next stop. So we would imagine that a F11, as it's called, would be the F stop. That would be the sharpest for this lens. Ordinarily, you would test that yourself. You would take a picture at 5.6, 6.5, 8, 9.3, 11, 13, 16, 22, 32. And you will find where the sharpest that setup is recorded on your sensor before we film. So you change the f-stop so you get the sharpest possible image. And every one of your images will be taken at the same f-stop number. The threads, as I told you, are important. In this case, they're just what they say. They're simple threads, as you might see, on a pipe. And in order to adapt this lens to a camera, you need the appropriate size thread adapter. This lens, I told you, has the need for two adapters. This is a rare thread size, 32.5 millimeters. The common adapter that you can get is 39 millimeters. So this will increase the diameter of the lens thread I'll take this off just to show you what's happening because that's important to me in trying to understand what's going on. I'm sure you will like it as well. There's the diameter. Too small for fitting onto my camera. I'll put this lens adapter on. It increases the effective diameter of the threads. And that's what will fit onto your camera mount. There are two kinds of mounts that you can buy. Make sure you get one with a stop in it. This one doesn't. What happens when I use this particular adapter, it continues to move even beyond the edge of the thread. 
If you really didn't care, you could glue this into place. You're going to dedicate every one of your adapters if possible because you don't want to keep finding the adapter of, that you need and re-screwing it on. You lose time just searching for the adapters. It's better to dedicate them to each lens as you are working with it. This is a different brand of lens and it too has the same kind of Leica thread so the Leica thread is found in lots and lots of different kinds of lenses. The brand I'm going to show you is Schneider Kreuznach. It's a German lens. It's noted for being relatively sharp. There are some that are very low grade and some that are very high grade. All of these that I'm showing are Campanon or Campanon S's. There are Campanars which are not as sharp and there are other similar sounding names. Campanon is this kind that we're using. At 150 millimeters, this is the biggest lens. It will photograph the furthest away. This is another 25 millimeter diameter lens thread. And what I will do is swap between the two expensive adapters. If I had only 39 millimeter diameter lenses, then I would be all set. These cost between $1.89 and $4.99, depending on who's selling them. It's a thin piece of aluminum that's been colored black. The 50 millimeter lens is my favorite. It gives me a good working distance. I can be about that far away from what I'm willing to photograph. And that's enough working distance to get light onto the object and to also have this in focus. So I like this particular lens. For getting closer, you need a smaller focal length. This is a 35 millimeter focal length lens. It also has the 25 millimeter rare thread. So I will use that adapter for all three of these lenses. You should be careful and know what size lens thread you're buying. If you get a 39 millimeter lens thread, it will fit onto an M39 adapter, it sells for a couple bucks. If you have a 25 millimeter thread, you need an M25 adapter to convert it to a 39 millimeter diameter. The M25 mount is expensive. And as I pointed out, the M32.5 mount is also expensive. And a 28 millimeter. And it fits nicely into the M39. It was a very inexpensive lens to adapt. The lens itself was expensive because this is a rare one. 28 millimeters lets you get very, very close to the object. These are scarce. So it's hard to find 28 millimeter lenses. And you can see they all have slightly different designs. They're made in different time periods. And they just simply screw onto your mount. This can be either a bellows or extension rings, depending on your preference. You can get 35s that aren't too difficult. Most of the lenses you will see are either 50 millimeter or 80 millimeter. You can also adapt other brands. I told you these were Schneider Kreuznach. This is a Rodegon lens. It's made by the Rodenstock company. It's also a good brand. And it too has a choice of different thread sizes. This one is 39 millimeters and it easily screws on to an M39 mount. This size is the normal bayonet for the EOS mount on a Canon camera. If you have a Nikon, you can use an A1 mount. If you have a Minolta, Pentax, Sony, whatever brand you have, you can then have the kind of adapter that takes 39 millimeter Leica threads and then goes to your mount style. Same thing with this kind of lens. This is a Rodenstock lens. It has a 2.8 as the maximum size hole. You can just about see the smallest diameter. That's an F16. You open it up and light goes through the entire opening. For 2.8, 
ideally you would imagine that 5.6 would be the number that you are going to choose to select for your sharpest lens setting. The lens mark is right here. It's barely visible. I've moved it to 5.6. I know that this lens's sharpness is best at 5.6 and now I'm ready to just snap it onto my equipment and begin taking pictures. If for some reason you need to use more than one adapter as I've done with these, that's sometimes a benefit. So what I'm going to do is show you how to look at the setup that these lenses provide. 150 millimeters furthest distance away. 28 millimeters the closest you could possibly get. We'll show you this both with the very long extension and you'll see you get too close. What you have to do is then back off and not get as much magnification but get greater working distance between the specimen and the front of the lens mount. Thank you.